Cincinnati's known for a lot of things, uh, the Ohio River, Chile, Cincinnati Reds, but a lot of people don't know that this is the site of the oldest observatory in the country. Uh, the Cincinnati Observatory is like the hidden gem of our city and not many people know about it. In 1842, uh, Ormsby McKnight Mitchell was teaching at the Cincinnati College. And there was a group in town called the Society for the Propagation of Useful Knowledge, self-help organization, and they offered to Mitchell an opportunity to lecture to the citizens of Cincinnati. So he gave his lecture in the Wesley Chapel, which is downtown where Procter & Gamble's is today, and over a thousand folks squeezed in to hear him talk on the lectures of astronomy. And at the end of the lecture, they said, well, why could we not, the citizens of Cincinnati, do something that President John Quincy Adams previously tried to do when he was president, start the country's first significant or professional observatory? So at the end of the lecture, they said, well, what we're going to do is start the Cincinnati Astronomical Society, private citizens forming a public institution. To become a member, you paid $25 a share. That was a lot of money back then. That was like two months' salary for a laborer. But within only three weeks, they had sufficient funds to commission Mitchell to go to Europe to buy a telescope. They didn't make telescopes in America back at that time. He ended up in Munich, Bavaria, where he acquired the second largest telescope in the world. The Tsar of Russia had the largest, and that's what eventually ended up in Cincinnati. The first location was not where we are here in Mount Lookout. The first uh, spot where the building was is in Mount Adams, actually, uh, right about where the monastery is today, if you can picture that spot. A uh, great overlook of the river and overlook of the city. Mount Ida was a hill east of downtown Cincinnati, uh, and it got its name because of a woman called Ida living on the hill. She supposedly lived in a trunk of a huge old sycamore tree. She used to do the wash for the soldiers down in Fort Washington along 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Street. So they called this name Mount Ida. She was probably popular with the soldiers at night according to some of the stories. Okay. So upon this hill then they decided to build the observatory. And the hill eventually was renamed to Mount Adams when President John Quincy Adams came to town in 1843 to lay the cornerstone of the original observatory building. By the time we get into the 1850s, the smoke pollution problem downtown was so bad, uh, you could not do astronomical work on top of the hill. Uh, there'd be 30 or 40 paddle wheel boats lined up along the Ohio River belching out smoke, plus the becoming industrial city. Uh, it just didn't work. Mitchell then was brought up to New York as a consultant to found the Dudley Observatory in Albany. and Eventually, he became the director of that observatory. So he was director of two observatories simultaneously, but he was doing his astronomical work in uh, Dudley uh, at the outbreak of the Civil War. Following the Civil War, with the death of Mitchell in the Civil War, uh, the board of directors of the Astronomical Society brought in a second director, Cleveland Abbey. He was well qualified as an astronomer, but he encountered the same problem, smoke pollution. So rather than sit on the hill doing nothing, he had an interest in meteorology. By this time, the country had stretched telegraph lines to the Western communities, and he would correspond with the cities, essentially asking, what is your weather? And he noticed a pattern. What the weather was in one city west turned out to be what the weather was in the next city east the following day. So Cleveland Abbey is credited as being the uh, father of American weather prediction. And when Washington, D.C. heard what he was doing, they yanked him up to Washington, D.C. under President Grant, Department of the Army, Signal Corps. And this was going to be a secret war tool to be able to predict weather. There were no wars immediately following the Civil War. So while he was associated with the uh, Weather Bureau, he founded the National Weather Service. When C Cleveland Abbey left Cincinnati in the observatory, uh, it became obvious to the board of directors that they had to do something. So they decided to uh, close the observatory, donate the assets to the city of Cincinnati, with a the provision they'd be given then to the new University of Cincinnati, which was a city university at the time, and a new observatory be built. So they located a new site on Mount Lookout, about five miles east of downtown Cincinnati. Uh, John Kilgore, one of the directors, uh, paid a significant, a significant sum, about $10,000, to build the observatory. The total cost was close to $30,000. He also donated four acres of ground. And the observatory then came to Mount Lookout, 
and it became a part of the University of Cincinnati. The old telescope used to sit here in this room, uh, and then we got a sweet deal on a new telescope. This one behind us in 1904, uh, we got a great deal on this Alvin Clark and Sons telescope, and it fit in this dome really well. Uh, so the old telescope got uh, taken apart and moved over to the other building here on site, uh, which was built in 1904, especially for the old telescope. Well, the Cincinnati Observatory now is a totally different institution. We don't do research here very much. Most of what we do is education. Uh, and we use the buildings for school groups, scout groups, all sorts of public programs, and even adult uh, education here. Uh, and we want to get people to come over and use the telescopes. Uh, so education now is our main mission, including I, I also go out to schools and all around the tri-state to do programs and bring astronomy to people and bring telescopes and uh, we do daytime and nighttime programs. It's, uh, this place is open quite often nowadays. Yeah, 2009 was a really big year for astronomy. It was the 400th anniversary of Galileo using his telescope. And, uh, and we celebrated here. We had a whole year of events, a lot of public programs, seeing all the planets up in the sky. Uh, but our main event that we did for 2009 was called the 40 Galileos program, where we awarded 40 telescopes to people around the community, teachers, community centers, uh, scout groups, and uh, train them on how to use these telescopes and to deliver big public programs. Uh, so we're planning on continuing that again this year and doing a very similar program uh, and uh, expanding it actually for the next three years. So we're going to have 100 telescopes out in the community in a few more years. The way our schedule works during the week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights are reserved for private programs. Like if you have a school group or scout group, you could come over on one of those. Uh, Thursdays and Fridays are generally our public nights, and you just call ahead, make reservations. Uh, Thursday nights are, uh, it's one of those things where you can see through the telescope, you get a public program by an astronomer, it lasts about an hour and a half or so, and that's repeated again on Friday night. Uh, Saturday night we do rentals at times and also special events if there's an eclipse going on or a planet is especially close. Uh, so Saturn is always the best site to see through this telescope. Well, when John Quincy Adams came to dedicate the first observatory building in 1843, he was really moved by the people of Cincinnati. Uh, he was quoted as saying that the future of the observatory was bright, but also the future of Cincinnati was equally bright for having an institution like this. And uh, we hope to carry on uh, John Quincy Adams' legacy and uh, Ormsby McKnight Mitchell's legacy and keep the observatory around for many generations to come.